Hi, Craig. It's like, no, no, no. Or anybody else that is. What's that? I'm not sure where anybody else is, but probably in hiding. Probably. Music playing. <laughs> yes. That's good. That's good. Because last week we didn't have the music playing. No. That it might be Tony. No, no, no that was me. Did, did, did you get the email that I just sent you? Yeah, with a with a picture um, of of something with legacy titles. I didn't know what the what the issue was, but. The issue is Premiere will not accept legacy titles the way that you traditionally put them in. You have to go in and change okay. in order for it to show up or else you get a an error message and it kind of freezes and glitches your, your scrubbing, so. That's exciting. Yeah, it was my afternoon. <laughs> Glad you got that figured out. Um, I think um, I don't think I had um, uh, the latest version of uh, Premiere installed, or I think it's installed. But I think every all of my projects are in 2019, so I haven't used 2020 yet. Well. They give you the workaround, but I I assume that that legacy title stuff is going to go away simply because they call it legacy title, um, and, and they're going to want everyone to use that you know essential graphics part of it. And yeah, but you can't uh, can't uh, move things around in there. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of a fixed because I I played around with that before I went to the legacy title trying to give it a little more flair and um, wherever it's set up is where it, where it sits I can't figure out I'm sure you could probably go in and you know change the x and y axes and whatever but. It's not as, as user friendly, so. Yeah. We've got a few people coming in. That's good. All coming in incognito. No, no camera, no voice. Nope. Nobody, nobody wants to be part of this. Splitting this guy.
Greg's getting a little feisty there. What's that? What are you slamming over there? It's Caleb. Oh, okay. Hey, everybody. I just uh, unmuted my microphone on my phone here. Oh, okay. Who is this? Uh, this is Tony Ferrara. Oh, hi, Tony. We'll get started here in just a little bit. Um, I got 403, so we're going to get started here and um, maybe get a few more people joining us as we move along. Um, hopefully, everyone can hear me okay. Um, in order to, to share um, both my uh, audio so that you guys can hear me as well as um, the program. Um, I had to run everything through a little sound mixer and then back into the computer um, in order to get everything, um, everything working. You guys can not only hear me, but hear the actual audio files that we're, that we're working on. So as long as that's working, um, what I have done is I, sh you should see my screen here where I'm sharing Audacity, um, the, the uh, program with you. Um, notice, uh, first open it up, gives you a little splash screen here um, that gives you, um, you know, some quick help uh, top here in the, in the menu splash screen uh, as well as full manual, um, your manual, and then uh, a online forum so that you can ask your questions uh, directly and somebody will, uh, you know, should, should answer you. Um, so that is all built right into the program. Uh, Audacity is, is free. It's, um, you know, free to download, free to use. It supports uh, Windows uh, as well as Mac and Linux machines, depending on whichever operating system you're using. It is uh, free uh, at Audacity team.org and again you can download it uh, there for free uh, 
it is, it's a pretty robust um, audio editor. It will also record for you. And so I'm going to do um, throughout the course of the next, I don't know, half hour or so, how to um, you know, record your own voice if you want to record podcasts at home. Uh, if you are advanced and have the, the gear, you can definitely plug in a mixer, uh, record, you know, music, uh, musical instruments, guitar, you know, standard, uh, you know, you know turntable, tape deck, you know, uh, MP3 player, you know, whatever you have to work with. Uh, you know, there are USB devices available, uh, interfaces that uh, you can record with as well. Um, I'm also going to show you how to import some audio and, and piece things together. Um, you know, we've got some sounds and sound effects and some music too that we can add. Um, you know, we'll show you, you know, how to save that Audacity file so that you can come back later and, and work on it. Uh, and then finally, export that, um, that file as an MP3 or a WAV. Uh, in order to share it with your friends or upload it to a podcast uh, hosting service or, or what works uh, best for you guys. So here back to the program, we'll click on um, OK to accept or clear the, the splash screen. And it brings us uh, right to the you know, work, uh, workstation here. Uh, we'll start working. Uh, if I expand this a little bit. Will you guys see? Yeah, that should work a little bit better for me. Um, you know, working across the top, it's uh, you know typical menu bar that you see in most uh, programs, starting with file in the top corner. That's where you start a new file or, or open an existing files. Uh, that's where we're going to export our, our finished file as an MP3 or a WAV, um, as well as you know exit from there. The other ones we'll talk about as we work our way through the program. Um, looking our way across the top here, we've got a pause button, a play button, a stop button, uh, you know, skip or, or reverse, uh, fast forward, and then a record button. Those should look pretty similar to any other recording or playback device or media player that you've been using. Um, working our way to the right here, uh, we do have some, oh, there's always a, a, a fire department call when I'm doing these live streams for some reason. Um, uh, some editing features here, uh, cut, copy, paste, uh, much like a, a Word document, you can cut, uh, copy, paste audio snippets if you'd like. Um, some other, you know, zoom in and cut functions as well. Um, the next two are our recording level and our playback level, and I will show you a little bit how we play around with those as we start recording and playing things back. Um, uh, if those levels are, are too, uh, too low or too high, they can be adjusted here, um, our recording level, mm -hmm. and then our playback level um, volume here is adjusted. Um, the next uh, set, uh, area down um, talks a little bit about uh, the, the sound cards and, and interfaces that we're going to be using. Uh, in this case, I will be recording with the microphone. Um, my computer is, is uh, equipped with a Realtek audio device. That's just the name brand of the audio device that is built into my computer, so I'm going to use that one. Um, we're going to record in stereo. Uh, and then for the output, I will be um, you know, going out through that Realtek um, brand speaker slash headphone jack on the side of the computer. Um, you know, again, that's uh, in this case, it's going out to a mixer and then back into the computer uh, so that you guys can hear uh, what is actually coming out of the computer. So. Um, uh, again, I have my microphone hooked up uh, in order to make sure that I'm getting levels into the program right here on my mic line or my recording level next to the microphone. It says click to start monitoring. So if I click right there, uh, it opens up the, the VU meter or the audio meter uh, monitor so that you can see as I'm talking, my uh, the levels are bouncing up and down 
Uh, and so it is connected. Uh, looks a little bit low, and so I'm going to try to adjust it here um, a little bit on the mixer just to make sure that we're getting a little bit, uh, uh, you know, better sound quality coming in. And I'll move that microphone up a little bit closer and point it uh, more towards my face as well. And so, yeah, there were, you know, want to. Uh, when we're recording, we want to be somewhere in this negative 12 to negative 6 range. Um, that's going to give us a great uh, audio levels and great quality. Um, you know, as I speak a little bit um, softer and, you know, maybe you know, a little more uh, you know, emotional, you know, that, that might go down a little bit. But as I get excited then, uh, you know, that's going to pick up. Uh, you know, we don't want to get into the red uh, area in this, you know, minus 3 to 0 range. Uh, that's going to be distorted and will cause... Um, distortion in our playback in our recording so you know want to be in that you know negative six to negative 12 you know even down into that negative 18 range will be will be okay in, in most cases um, you know pretty simple to start recording once you have a level coming in um, much like any other recorder we can hit uh, the record button uh, starts recording instantly and you'll notice that we have uh, the sound wave uh, showing up down here at the bottom as it's recording. I will hit the stop button to stop recording um, you know, to play back what I've recorded. I can uh, bring my mouse down to, uh, to the record area down here and I can so we have uh, these you know, highlight an area that I want to listen to. I can click and drag instantly and you'll notice that we and it'll play back that particular area it's recording in. I can hit the stop button I the record button uh, I starts the recording button. I can hit the play button and it plays back the entire audio file for us um, as we look in here uh, starts recording you know we've got a little bit of an area here where I, I may have taken a breath um, I can highlight that area um, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a waveform there. Again, it's probably me taking that breath in. Uh, I can come in uh, using just these little features up here. I can silence that entire audio section so you don't, if you don't want to hear that breath. I've got it selected here in the white. Uh, this little tool right here, I can click on that. And that will take... Um, that little breath sound out so now it's going to be completely silent in there so you notice that the waveform disappeared um, as with any other windows uh, you know program uh, there are undo features built in so if there's something that you don't want uh, or that you didn't want to do or you accidentally did or, or you don't have the you know or per, you know didn't uh, provide the results you were anticipating uh, there's an undo feature right here i can click um, and you'll notice that it brings back that waveform down here uh, that we uh, silenced earlier. Um, you know, if I wanted to zoom in uh, to, to take a look and see exactly, uh, you know, get a much better idea of, of that waveform, I can zoom in, I can zoom out if I wanted to look at the project as a whole. Um, there are other features in here. Um, the one next to that. Um, you know, silence audio selection is kind of the opposite. Uh, I have this area highlighted in white. This button will delete everything else out. So it will save what I have highlighted. Um, so kind of just the opposite of, of uh, what we did there. So uh, obviously I don't want to do that. I can hit the undo button and bring everything back again. Um, Again, I have an, that area highlighted. The cut, copy, paste uh, works much like a Word document or your email. I can, I can cut that area out, and it takes out that entire section. If I wanted to save that um, uh, you know, piece, I can uh, bring it back in at the end. If I starts recording instantly, and you'll notice that we have uh, the sound wave uh, you know, and I can paste that at the end here. Oh. Let me put it right back where I wanted it to. That's not what I wanted. Back here, there we go. Uh, well, 
So I, I clicked out of the copy. So I'll come back in. Starts recording in. Highlight an area. Um, copy it. Come back to the end. And, and paste. And so now it's taken that uh, audio and, and copied it and pasted it toward at the end of our at the end of our timeline here. Again, I will undo that. Um, so it's just for demonstration purposes. And so uh, we can come in and, and work on this particular audio a little bit more if we wanted to. Um, there are tons of effects that we can add um, that are built in. Um, by clicking on the effects uh, button up at the top of the menu. Uh, if we wanted to uh, you know, fade in or fade out that particular piece of audio, we can um, you know, select fade in, fade out. Um, you know, we can reverse it, we can add some reverb, maybe if we wanted a little bit um, uh, you know, more echo to it just to make it sound less clean, or maybe you are doing some vocals and wanted a little bit more, uh, you know, reverb in there to um, you know, take uh, that studio feel out of it. Um, there's also uh, a noise reduction. So maybe you are recording in your house and the, the furnace kicks on or the refrigerator kicks on. Um, if you're able to capture a, a snippet of that noise that's in the background, uh, you can highlight that noise. Um, we'll try here. I can click on um, those effects again. I can come into noise reduction. And so step one is select a few seconds of just noise so Audacity knows what to filter out. So I've done that, I've highlighted, I've clicked it in my timeline here. Um, I can click on get noise profile. And so it saves that. And then I can come back into effects, noise reduction, and then I can apply that um, by clicking the OK button. And so it'll apply that noise reduction to the entire clip um, on, on the timeline here. So, you know, kind of helpful uh, if you are, you know, again, recording in your house, you know, the furnace kicks on, maybe you know, you've got a makeshift studio in your basement or, or something like that, or you've got a, you know, you know, wind howling outside. If you're able to capture a little bit of that noise without talking over it, then you can uh, sample that noise and apply it to your entire production. Um, in addition to recording and, and cutting and pasting, um, you know, and, and editing your audio and cutting out parts and repeating parts, and um, you know, we can come in uh, if we wanted and we can um, cut this. Uh, or copy this area. Uh, we can paste it here at the end. Um, we can come in then and, and uh, cut this section out of here. And now we've got two different areas. Um, and we can switch the, the order of them and, and move them around if, if we uh, wanted to uh, switch the order and, and you know, edit that way. Again, for demonstration purposes, we'll take it back to where we were. Um, in order to bring in music or sound effects, um, I can come into File and Import. Make sure. Yep. All right. Checking the time here, making sure we're not going to go too long. Um, I can come into Import. Um, I'm going to import some audio. Um, I'm going to find the file here on my desktop. Um, there it is, basics of audio recording. I have um, some music files. I've got a beach party sound here, so I can bring that in. And so it'll bring it in as a, uh, as a separate audio track here below our voices uh, that we recorded. And so um, it will overlap the two. And so, um, you know, right now if I bring my playhead back here and play this. You can uh, hear the, the um, music. You can kind of hear my voice in the background. Uh, we can bring down the music here, um, maybe to negative 18 decibels. And then let's try that again and see how that works out. And you'll notice that we have and so you can hear my voice a little bit better. So let's crank that up just to see um, how that works. We have uh, the sound wave. 
And so, yeah, you can definitely play around with that and maybe even bring that music down a little bit more um, so that we can hear my voice a little bit better. And you'll notice that we have... Uh, yeah, and so you can hear my voice. You still hear enough of the, the background uh, music as well. Um, if we wanted to bring in uh, another um, audio track here, I believe we have some sound effects to go with that beach music. I believe we've got some uh, uh, seagulls chirping here. And so if we come to the very beginning, the record button. Yeah, so now we've got my, my audio that I recorded. We have the music in here, and then we've got that loud uh, seagull noise coming in as well. And again, I hope you guys can hear that um, coming through the uh, webinar. Um, and so uh, once we go through and we can, you know, then, you know, add another seagull if we wanted to, um, I'll import audio again, uh, bring that, that seagull in and it, uh, where did my, I lost, oh, I'm stuck behind the zoom. There we go. All right, so it added another another seagull here and we'll, there we go. We'll kind of size these up so that we can see um, what we've got going on. Um, again, if I wanted to uh, zoom in and, and adjust this a little bit better, I can. We can come in and highlight this uh, particular seagull. Uh, we can move it. We can copy. We can paste. So we can copy. We'll bring it back down here and we'll paste it in again. Um, for our demonstration here, I'm going to mute our, our music so that you can just hear my voice and then the, the seagulls playing in there. So, so I've got to highlight the entire thing here. There we go. The record button uh, starts recording instantly. And, and so you can see that as we're uh, you know, highlight an area that we want to listen to. Um, it will play that area. You could hear my voice. You could definitely hear the seagulls uh, behind. Um, you know, what I did there is I hit the mute button in order to to block out or not listen to the beach party uh, music in the background, so that I can definitely hear the seagulls and my voice. Uh, in order to bring the beach party music back, I can hit the mute button again and it will bring it back. And so now if I listen to that particular section, the record button, uh, start, you know, it brings that, that music back faintly in the background. Um, you know, these uh, seagulls might be a little too loud for our, our use here. So again, we can uh, bring those down as well. Um, slide those down and so if we come back up here and, and listen to that the record button yeah definitely a little bit better there you can hear my voice uh, you know on top of the seagulls um, I'm going to get rid of, of some of these tracks um, just to show you to you know we can uh, button uh, starts recording instantly and you'll notice that we have uh, the sound wave there we go. And then we can bring in uh, another um, you know, audio file. Uh, this one is um, a voiceover uh, from earlier um, you know, to show you that you know, if you have someone that records audio or, or voiceover tracks somewhere else, um, you can um, bring those in. You don't have to record using Audacity. And so we can highlight for more information please visit our website at camerie.org slash tech tips and so the um, again just to show you that you can bring in uh, spoken word uh, as well um, if you wanted to listen to just that you could click the solo button and it works kind of opposite of that mute button it, this is the only track that you're going to hear now. For information, please visit our website at camerie.org slash tech tips. And so it, it uh, you know, isolates that, that particular track instead of um, you know, uh, mute and, and mutes the other. So it um, works kind of in conjunction with that mute, but, but in opposite fashion. Um, 
again, if you wanted to add um, you know, more tracks, uh, you can definitely you know, do that by file and import and, and edit and copy and cut and paste and you know, move things around and um, you know, cut this and you can bring it back over here and paste it at the end. Um, you know, and, and then listen to Ash Tech Tips. Can you? And so, um, you know, a couple different ways that you can go about that as well. Um, so, for uh, once you're done or, or you know, you want to take a break, um, file and save project. Um, this is where you can save that project and come back and work on it later. If I did a, a save project at this point, it would save. Uh, save it in Audacity so that I could come into this screen again and it will look exactly like this. Um, you know, if I wanted to save it as as another, with another name, maybe as as a backup, um, you can do file, you know, save project as um, and give it a name. So you know, we will save this one. Um, let's call this just test for our demonstration purposes and so we've saved that locally and so I can close audacity I can come back and it'll be in the same state uh, that it is now and I can continue editing from there uh, if I was ready to share this file with someone or export it um, or, or upload it to a site um, saving this or sending this audacity file uh, isn't going to do people a whole lot of good um, it's going to open up Audacity, and if they don't have all of the assets and all of the recordings that we um, imported uh, as part of our project, um, that's not going to do them any good. They're going to need a standalone audio file, so in this case, we can do either an MP3 or a WAV file, or there's an OGG file, which uh, works um, on the Mac side and uh, Linux side, um, but for um, Ninety-eight percent of of what we're doing, as far as uh, you know, uploading or sharing with friends, you know, sharing on social media, uh, podcast channels, etc. Uh, MP3 or Wave will will address ninety-eight, ninety-nine percent of those um, those for you. I see we've got a, a chat here. Just want to make up. Oh, yep. Um, thanks, Jake. Um, Jake is. Um, you know, posting in the chat, and I hope that you guys are are um, are able to to see that. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, let us know. Um, you know, you can post them there in the chat. Uh, you can also send us an email after the fact, um, info at camerie.org. Uh, we will uh, check those uh, regularly throughout the day. So, if you do have any questions, you can definitely um, you know email us. Uh, there are also uh, links to Audacity and the manuals on our website, which again is uh, camerie.org slash tech tips. And so feel free to check that out as well. Um, so as I was saying, you know, uh, in order to share this file, we're going to need to um, export that um, as a WAV or an MP3. Um, you know, again, depending on which um, you know, service you're using uh, and when which application you want to use this file for, um, that will determine whether you're going to go with a WAV, which is a, an uncompressed file. It's going to be a, a much larger file size, whereas an MP3 will be a more compressed file and will give us um, you know, a, a larger or a smaller file size. Uh, the mp3 will be smaller and so in this case I'm going to just uh, go with the default name of test and wave as our format and I'm going to click save and so here it says it gives you a warning that uh, your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file so um, you know, I'm going to click OK just for our demonstration purposes. Uh, brings up the uh, dialog box to edit the metadata tags you know, such as the artist name track title, album title, the number, the year, genre, etc. And so if you have an MP3 player or a, an audio player that uh, recognizes that uh, information, uh, you can enter that here. Um, 
you know, if you have a, you know, a stereo uh, you know, in your car that displays all of that information from different radio stations and satellite and, um, you know, this is where, where they get that information. It's, it's that metadata associated with um, those particular, uh, that particular audio file. So um, you can enter that here for, uh, for our demonstration. I'm just going to leave it blank and click OK. And so we have exported that, uh, that WAV file. And so from here, I'm going to go and, and, and export uh, MP3. Uh, again, uh, defaults um, to, uh, in this case, my documents, Audacity file folder, um, and we'll, we'll save this MP3 there. It gives you, a, again, a few uh, format options and, and uh, variables here. Um, in our, our demonstration here, I'm going to accept the defaults. Uh, say you know they look good to me um, as far as the standard uh, quality uh, I don't need anything uh, beyond that I don't need insane quality or extreme quality um, medium just uh, you know standard seems seems like a great default uh, the variable speed of, of fast again accepting the default uh, and then the uh, joint stereo and I'll click save um, Again, tracks will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file. Basically what that, oh, and then the metadata again. Um, basically that means that, um, you know, it's going to export this uh, uh, one audio file where it's com combining the, the beach seagulls as well as the voiceover, and you won't be able to edit them again um, like you see here. It will be all on, on one line. Uh, in that final export file, and so you won't have um, won't have the ability to adjust the audio uh, or the level of the of the voiceover and that of the seagulls, uh, you know, because it, it'll all be what they call mixed down and, and combined into one file. Um, let me double check our chat here and make sure we don't have any questions. Um, yep. Oh, yes, thanks, Jake. Camerie.org slash tech tips. Uh, Diane, I just recorded someone by phone today, and this would have been more efficient than, okay, uh, you're going to try it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, uh, recording, you know, plugging in your phone and, and recording that way, definitely, um, you know, a, a great option. Uh, again, you know, it's free and, and relatively easy to use. Uh, they are, you know, making... Uh, updates on a pretty regular basis. Uh, you can subscribe to their newsletter and, and follow all of that as well. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the support on their end is, um, is really, really good. They've got a, a good team of people that are, that are, you know, checking those blog posts and, and online. Um, you know, again, just want to make sure make sure we're good on time um want to make sure that uh you know that you know they're they're keeping up to date uh with with uh, checking those as well um you know the the support it it's all a, a lot of volunteers that are that are uh, creating the the software they've got a great volunteer team that is uh, documenting the software as well um so yeah if you want to check out their website download it um, and you know, maybe even look, a, you know, read a little bit about their backstory and the team that they have um, working on it. Um, again, a, a lot of volunteers that are um, working on it and translating the documentation into different languages, et cetera. So, um, you know, kind of a grassroots campaign to get the software up there. Uh, if you like it, you know, of course, um, you know, they do have a donations page. So if you're, uh, you know, if you really like it and want to help them out, you can donate as well. But uh, uh, any other, other questions here just before we wrap things up? All right. Um, and so um, I don't see anything right there. Uh, again, when I did that file and export, um, it saved it on um, to the My Documents folder on my computer in a folder called Audacity. Of course, we could have changed that, um, you know, a, a few times if if we wanted to, um, you know, as far as the the location, etc. 
And so let me come in and see if I can find. Um, we'll come in and I'll share this with you if I can. There. There you go. All right, so hopefully you guys can see this uh, Windows Explorer screen now, um, or File Explorer, I guess they call it now. Um, so again, uh, the Audacity project file that we saved, or we called it test, it has the little headphones icon there for Audacity. Uh, you'll notice that that is just three kilobytes of, of information. And again, that's just saving that layout that we saw um, there on the screen. Uh, all of the data and, and uh, recording thing uh, files, audio files are, are buried within the folder structure um, here. Um, this first one here is our, uh, or the, the middle one, I guess, is our MP3 uh, file that we exported. And you'll notice that it's just 107 kilobytes. Um, you know, granted, it's only a few seconds long, but in comparison, uh, that same file as a WAV uh, file that is not compressed is, is uh, you know, 20 times the size or 19 times the size at uh, 1,933 kilobytes. Um, so, you know, again, depending on, on your audience or, or platform or wherever you're sharing this, um, that will determine whether you're going to go with an MP3 or a WAV file. Uh, but if you're just sending it to friends or, or uploading it, um, you know that uh, that MP3 will be a much smaller file and will uh, upload a lot quicker. So, uh, you know, if, if you have that option, I I would recommend the MP3 file for that. Come back over to um, the Audacity. Um, there we go. Cool. Any other questions? Um, what would be the best format for Premiere Pro? Um, if I were doing this and I were creating a, a folder or a file here in Audacity that I wanted to bring into uh, Premiere, I would export as a wave. It's going to give you a much um, a much larger file, but um, once you bring that into uh, Premiere or any video editor, what you're going to do is um, you know, bring it into your timeline. You're going to export that again uh, as part of your finished video file. And what Premiere is going to do is it's going to compress that file and, and you know, audio and video into a into a final uh, file. And so, um, you know, I would rather it compress that wave file than trying to compress an already compressed file. Not that I'm a big nerd when it comes to uh, uh, you know, audio quality, but, uh, you know, I try to come up with, you know, start using the, the best quality I can because knowing that it is going to be compressed, um, you know, in the final export project. So rather than compressing a compressed file, uh, I'd rather compress an uncompressed file just to, um, you know, save some quality there. Um, is MP3 best file to save to export to Mac? Um, yeah, I, you know, uh, I know that Mac has, has issue with, with certain WAV files and, and, um, you know, I know MP3 is, is universal, um, between Mac and, uh, Windows. So yes, I, I would agree that MP3 would be, uh, best for that. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything here because all of my windows are overlapping. Yep, cool. Um, yep. Oh yeah, that, thanks, Diane. I I think that this is you know uh, a great way to reach a, a number of people that that we haven't before. Um, you know, able to get you know classes online. Um, you know, and I, you know, rather than everyone come into the studio and, and, you know, you know, try, try to travel and make time out of their, take time out of their day, it just makes it a little bit easier if everyone can sign in online. Oh, cool. All right. Anyone else have any questions? Oh, one more new one. Uh, 
is the MP3 the best file to save? Uh, nope. Um, yes, these um, the webinars will um, will be recorded and archived. Uh, I will add them um, to that camerie.org slash tech tips page as Jake just posted there. Um, probably won't be today, but uh, should be out there tomorrow. Cool. All right. Again, you know, thank you guys for for joining us. Um, one oh one one thing I did want to add: um, these uh, voiceovers that I had um, in the in the sample here, I did those all online, and it is a computer uh, generated voice, um, and it was at freetts.com and it's freetts.com and so um, that's freetext2speech.com uh, it will allow you to, I think it's it's a daily limit because it is free. I think it'll let you do 6,000 words a day um, and export those. You type them in and you export them as, as an MP3 file and then you're able to bring them into your um, uh, you know, audio programs and, and uh, projects that way. Um, Yeah, so, um, you know, again, uh, it, it took some finessing uh, in my particular instance here. I'm trying to, you know, tell it to use camerie.org. Um, so I had to, you know, cam as one word, uh, eerie spelled um, like the scary, uh, E-E-R-I-E. -E. Um, I had to spell out the word dot. Um, it, uh, and then it, it, I used it. Uh, use the word org dot org okay um, you know I wanted to use slash so I had to type out the word slash and then uh, uh, tech tips um, so you know it took some finessing uh, you can put in commas to you know uh, you know break it up a little bit um, again that's free tts dot com and um, what I'll do is I will play that again for you so you guys can can kind of hear it and see what it sounds like. Um, and that website is caneerie.org slash tech tips. Website it. Again, that website is caneerie.org slash tech tips. You know, it kind of sounds, uh, you know, realistic. Um, and so you don't have to listen to me the whole time. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, you know, info, yep, it does have other voices. Yep. Um, you know, some of them are, you know, it has some paid voices, it has some free voices, depends on how, how crazy you want to get. I think it had Australian and, and you know, British and, and those things as well. Um, yeah. Camheary.org. No, it doesn't make your voice change. You actually type in what you want it to say, and then um, and then you can hit the download button, and it'll download it as an MP3 file for you. Yep, yep, very cool. So, um, yeah, yes, it interprets text. Again, I typed in our email address in there. If you have any questions, info at camerie.org, shoot us an email. Um, we are again checking that uh, regularly throughout the day. So um, next week, uh, next Thursday at this time, um, we're going to uh, do uh, what is it? Green screen, uh, green screen for video projects is the name of of that um, uh, that class, and we're uh, going to use some green screen footage. Uh, show you how to edit that in Adobe uh, Premiere. Uh, you know, erase the green background and, and add a, a background of, of your choice uh, uh, in in Adobe Premiere. So in post production, 
Um, it's a little bit different um, than you know doing it live in the studio. Um, I think that this makes it just a little bit easier. Um, but again, that'll be next week at the same time, Thursday at four o'clock. Uh, it is on our Facebook page, so you know check that out. And uh, yep. All right, Diane, we will see you then. All right, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Emily. We'll talk to you later. Um, all right. Thank you again for joining us.